Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Charlie Tyler and for those of you that are new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and please like, comment and share this video with all your friends. So I'm currently contained to this room as I tested positive for COVID this morning which is very frustrating, has kind of put a halt to all of the live rehearsals that we have been doing over the last few weeks. So today I thought I would do a Q&A and I asked all of you guys on my Instagram story to give me some questions that I would answer for you all in a video. So the first question is, where was your first gig? Oh my God. So the first gig I ever played was at my village carnival, like fair thing. So I remember the day of the gig, I was absolutely petrified. I was like 13 or 14 and just played like four songs, I think, to a backing track. And I remember a lady got up, was dancing to, I think it was Rolling in the Deep by Adele. And right in front of my face was like doing the most horrendous dancing. I think I lost it mid song. So like trying to salvage the performance and find my place on the backing track was just a disaster. But I clearly didn't hate it too much because I've gone back for more. So question number two is, what drew you to the music industry and what is your favorite and least favorite part about it? That's a really good question actually. I think I was drawn to the music industry because I have quite a competitive nature. So the end goal of being up on stage performing for a lot of people was quite appealing to me because I liked the challenge. You know, if somebody says you can't do something, I'm the sort of person that's like, well, just literally watch me prove you wrong. I know that a lot of people that knew me from a young age would be absolutely mind blown that I've kind of chosen to put myself in front of people and go and stand on stage and sing for people. But there's just an element of comfort and release that I feel. One of my favorite parts of the music industry is that it can open so many different doors to other industries and opportunities. And I'm always looking for new things to try. I think it's so appealing to me that I'm able to do that and put myself out there. My least favorite part is that you literally have to do everything yourself. And you know, you have to be your own manager, your own promoter, your own agent. You have to sing the songs, you have to write them and you know, promote and, and everything in between. So that's probably my least favorite part. As much as it's very rewarding when you get a bit of success as a result of putting the work in, it is a lot to take. So the next question is, explain your creative process. So I write all of my songs with my songwriting partner and producer. Russ might come in with a new guitar riff or a song that he had lying around and he would play that to me and we would work from there if it needs new verse lyrics, then we'd work on that together. However, other times I would come in with any ideas or situations and feelings that I had, we'd completely collaborate and start from scratch together. We always have the policy of finishing any song or idea that we've been working on and finish it right to the end rather than kind of leaving it half done. And we just find that this is the best way for our productivity and to get the most out of our writing sessions, really. Next question is, what is an average day like for you? So an average day for me, obviously not at the moment, um, is generally quite busy. And I normally get up between five and six, do a little bit of work, maybe schedule some posts for my social media pages or some kind of practical um, music task that can help me push my career forwards, I guess. Around seven-ish, I go do some kind of exercise. So I might go to the gym or go for a run or a walk, come back, get myself sorted for the day. At the moment, we're working a lot on the live rehearsals. So that's pretty full on. And we're just running the 16 track set right the way through and then working on the acoustic versions. I'm constantly creating content, filming YouTube videos. So the list goes on. I mean, we've only just finished the album. So my days prior to this were always spent in the studio. We'd be recording like three to four tracks a day. So generally each day I have a meeting or two with my team where we discuss, you know, the plans and goals for the oncoming week. And we kind of talk about where we think we're going with the music, any new ideas that have come up. And it's just a good way to kind of all be in the same place and get our ideas down on paper, really. So next question is, what advice do you have for an aspiring singer songwriter? I feel like I'm not really the suitable person to be giving that advice as I'm still learning myself. I'm still very young and aspiring to be the successful singer songwriter that 
I want to be. But I guess I would just say like the industry is completely unknown and it's not black and white. There's no right or wrong in what you should be doing and what you should be posting and writing about and how your live set should be. So I mean, I think you just got to go with the flow and just always go with your gut feeling, work hard and just trust exactly what you want to do. The workload is unbelievable and more than you'll ever expect, but the rewards are absolutely fantastic. So next question is, how often do you go to the gym? So this really depends on how I'm feeling physically, mentally, and how busy we are with the live show rehearsals, because obviously that comes first. But I generally tend to go to the gym average about four times a week. I tend to do two upper body days, two lower body days, and obviously space them out so I've got adequate rest time in between. But I find that this is quite a happy medium. Sometimes it's a bit more difficult because I work three days a week from five o'clock in the morning till 9 a.m. So by the time I finish, I don't always feel like going to the gym. I definitely try to push myself to go because I know how great I will feel mentally for like the rest of the day. I did actually start a fitness page um, on Instagram and a YouTube page actually, where I kind of just post like some of my workouts and photos from the gym and stuff. So feel free to follow me on Instagram at Charlie Tyler Fitness. And it's the same for YouTube as well. And I'll link them all in the description below. Next question. Do you have any hobbies away from music? Yes, I do. When I was younger, I used to play football and hockey quite seriously. Um, I used to play for county, but I quit playing football when I was like 16, stuck with the hockey, play a bit of tennis with my family. I'm trying to read a lot more as I'm so aware that this is an absolutely fantastic way of educating yourself. And I'm always trying to learn more about the industry I'm going into and self-improvement. That's definitely becoming a hobby. One thing though, that's I guess kind of a weird fact about me that you can learn is <laughs> I really, really don't like watching TV or, you know, doing that relaxing activity of binge watching Netflix. Like, I just can't do it. I find it so boring. That's my idea of just like a nightmare. Like, don't get me wrong, if I get into a show, then I'm sold, but it can't be more than like eight episodes long. <laughs> because my attention span is non-existent when it comes to tv programs if the film is over an hour and 30 minutes long don't even take me to the cinema no point i just have the stupid habit of not wanting to watch any new films like i only want to watch things that i've already seen and i know are good because i'm just too terrified of wasting my time next question is who would you say are your inspirations musically? I love this question. So for those of you that don't know, I basically got into music as a result of going to an Ellie Golding show. I was so desperate to meet her, that I thought, okay, the only way I'm gonna do so is if I become a professional musician myself. And I couldn't play guitar, I couldn't play an instrument, couldn't write my own songs. Little Charlie's logic is just absolutely ridiculous. But some of my main like musical inspirations are Fleetwood Mac, Oh my god, don't get me started. I remember hearing them for the first time, maybe five years ago. Somebody played me rumours and my mind was blown, well and truly. I just remember like secondhand news coming on and I, I don't know, like something just clicked and I couldn't stop listening to them. My parents somehow got me tickets to see them. Stevie Nicks was just as magical as I kind of had envisioned in my head. And there's just something like about the songwriting, the harmonies and the composition. It's so unfair that you have like Stevie Nicks, Christy McVie and Lindsay Buckingham like all in. <laughs> all in one band. That's unfair that you can have that much talent in one band songwriting wise. Um, another inspiration for me is Carole King. She's another one like, I, I just don't have the words to express how I feel when I listen to their music. Tapestry is probably one of the most iconic and unbelievable albums ever released. They're just, just pure genius. I'm very into the sort of older artists and bands and there's just something about the authenticity that these artists have and convey that you don't really see that much these days so i'm kind of like clinging on to like carol king flute of mac james taylor but i guess some of the contemporary artists like taylor swift is a huge inspiration to me and definitely has a big influence on the music that i make russ and i kind of always say it's like a combination of flute of mac meets Taylor Swift and Ed Sheeran, which I think is sick. And I mean, if that comes across, then that just feels so rewarding and just wicked that it's kind of coming from my roots. And I just find that when I listen to like the likes of Sting and Fleetwood Mac and James Taylor, they all just use like real chords and real music, real lyrics 
we're not just repeating the same line and that's something that Russ and I always try to take forward to our music. So the last question is, how many songs have you written? <laughs> oh my god, Russ and I have gone mental with this. So I've been working and writing songs with Russ since last April and we currently have a 16 track album that is finished. We've released two six track EPs plus three extra singles and I think in total we're at over 60 songs that we've written in less than a year which made choosing that album extremely difficult. I can't explain how excited I am for you guys to hear all this new music. We've tried to incorporate the sort of music we love into my music. So that is all for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. You can watch my previous video I tried to be a pop star and ended up in hospital. The link is in my description. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share with all your friends. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.